Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Coastal Carolina University. As you can tell by the title, I'm telling you exactly what it was like. <laughs> I'm going to be covering the academics, the campus, the housing, the food, and the nightlife. So you can skip ahead if there's something you don't want to hear about, but I'm going to be talking about them in that order. I myself was a marine science major at Coastal, so I don't know a whole lot about the other majors. But I do know that at Coastal, with every single major, they get you into it your freshman year. You don't have to pick a major until I think junior year is when you commit to a major. But freshman year, they have you taking courses that correlate to your major. So I was taking field trips to the beach my second week of school at Coastal, which was really cool because obviously a marine science major, I wanted to be on the beach studying the ocean. And my roommate is an early childhood education major and she was in schools her first semester studying the children. So it's like really awesome. They don't make you wait and take a bunch of core classes until you get to do the fun stuff. The campus and location of the school are both really beautiful. The campus is all really close together. It's just like a traditional closed campus. I don't know how else to describe it. All of the classes are super close together. I never had a walk more than 10 minutes long and the dorms are on campus as well. The sophomore dorms are off campus. Coastal provides buses to Walmart and the beach. You're also near the beach. So if you love the beach, you're probably going to want a car at Coastal, but you don't need a car. There's definitely advantages to having a car at school, but you don't need one. The parking is not the best. Um, a lot of people complain about it. I did not have my car there, so I never really had to worry about it, but I was always driving places with my friends and the parking was just really not good. So keep that in mind. I mean, there is a giant parking lot. It's called GG but it's not near your classes. Freshman and sophomore year, they require students to get a meal plan because you are living on campus. And then if you're a junior or a senior and living on campus, I think you have to buy a meal plan too. So my freshman year, I bought the unlimited meal plan. Definitely did not need it, but my parents were nervous sending me to school and not getting me the unlimited. So <laughs> that's what they did. It's unlimited meal swipes. It's not unlimited dining dollars. So there's meal swipes and there's dining dollars. Dining dollars you spend at Starbucks, Einstein's, Podmark, The Smoothie Place, Freshens, and Chick-fil-A. I'm currently a sophomore and this year I picked the bronze maybe? I don't know. There's different meal plans and a different amount of dining dollars come with each. So I got the one that came with 400 dining dollars and I think three meal swipes a day and that was more than enough. I rarely went to the dining hall, mainly because of COVID. I just didn't like going. They didn't have a lot of options because of COVID. Hopefully things change, but I honestly feel bad if you're going into Coastal as a freshman and you didn't really get to see what it was like before COVID because it was way better. They're doing their best. Every college is trying their best, but the food was definitely not my favorite because of COVID, we couldn't really customize our sandwiches. They just had the deli station like closed off. Uh, they had to cut materials. I don't know. And the hours were really weird because of COVID. The meal plan with the 400 dining dollars was actually the cheapest meal plan, so go for that one. I love that Coastal guarantees housing every single year for all of their students. That's super rare. A lot of colleges only guarantee freshmen, um, sometimes sophomores housing but Coastal will provide you housing all four years if you need it. But you do have to live on campus as a freshman and a sophomore. Unless you like opt out of it, I think it might be complicated. I don't know, I have a friend that did it. I never really asked her how she did it, but she opted out and she lives somewhere else. I will have my room tour linked below from my freshman year, and I will have my room tour linked from my sophomore year, which is what I'm currently in. I lived in Teal. Teal is literally the same as Tradition and Singleton and it's four new buildings and they're all the same exact setup. They're suites of 10. I would recommend it if you like a more modern feel, if you want to be surrounded by a lot of people. And then those buildings are also much higher security than the rest. So you need a key card to open 
the front door of the building, you need a key card to open. The stairwell, you need a key card to open. The hallway door, a key card to open your suite door, and then an actual key to open your dorm. The older buildings, like Ingle and Eaglin, you just need a key card to open the front door, and then you're in. There's no more using key card. And a key to get into your room, there's no sweet key card thing. The woods, they're more apartment style, so they're just kind of set up on the outside and you just need a key to get in your room. The prices do change. I'm not sure what the price differences are. I know that the newer the building, I think the more expensive it is. Along with housing, like there's roommates and stuff, the newer buildings, there are two to a room, which was last year, but it might have changed because of COVID. I think that you can pick to have your own room now in the new buildings. And then Ingle and Eaglin, there's different ones. There's like different setups. There's triples, there's doubles, and then there's singles. Singles are all on the top floor, I think. They're, you have four separate rooms and then like a living room in the middle. And then the woods, you all have your own bedroom if you don't want a roommate. So, university places where sophomores live, it is down the street from the school. It's not directly on campus, but it is owned by Coastal and they have buses that can take you from campus to university place but a lot of people have cars bikes you can walk it's walking distance you're fine if you want to walk i lived in grand strand and grand strand is the same as low country and sand hill so if you watch my room tour for grand strand which i'll have in the description it is literally the same as low country and sand hills so i didn't really care where i lived as long as i was in those three buildings it's four people per apartment. You have a full-size kitchen. You have a washer, dryer, living room, and then you have your own bedroom with a full-size bed, your own bathroom, and a walk-in closet. If you want to find tours on the other housing options for University Place, I'm sure there's more on YouTube, but they're different. And you get your own room, but you share a bathroom with one other person, and they're just not as big, but it's still an apartment. So now I'm gonna be talking about security at university place you can search up conway conway south carolina that's where coastal carolina is and how safe the town is but i'm just gonna be talking about like what my school does for safety at the end of the day it's really not coastal spot how safe conway is at university place there's three gates they're all open during the day i'm not sure what time they open up again but they close at 11 p.m every night and then there's only one gate that you can get into after 11 and there's a guard at it and you'll ask to see everyone's CNO card which is our school ID and if you don't have one you can't come in so it's really safe and it's really hard to get Ubers at night so you have to order the Uber to Circle K and walk to it and definitely don't order DoorDash because your DoorDash can't get in either past 11. Yeah so it's safe people can't drive their cars in. I will not be getting into IDs and all that with nightlife, but um, if you have questions about that, damn me on Instagram because I will literally answer anything. Things have changed, but this is just how I experienced it. So you have 810 Tongi's Crooked Floor Tab and the Coop. Those are the main four, obviously. You can go anywhere you want, but 810 is super chill. It's actually a bowling alley, but non bulls i mean yeah i guess some people do there's two big bars and it's just a lot of fun and everyone goes there so that's chill no one dresses up to go there tongies it's a chill happy hour but at night it's dancing and it's fun and, they, and a lot of events happen in tongies coop is right across the street from the school and so is cricket floor tavern they are neighbors cricket floor used to be american tavern changed names whatever the owners changed, so the whole place changed up. But the coop kind of is where everyone dresses up, and same with crooked floor. So, and it's really, really sweaty, and they let too many people in. And, okay, they let too many people in, but they also don't let enough people in. I don't know, they deny a lot of people. Crooked floor, it's aesthetic at night and during the day. I mean, it's just super cute and that's where a lot of the tailgates are this year because um, you couldn't have tailgates, like big tailgates because of COVID. So tailgates happen at Crooked Floor. 
most of the time. DM me on Instagram if you have any more questions or you can comment them, but if you think that you should probably DM me it instead of commenting it, if you know what I mean, then um, do that. Okay, bye, thanks for watching.